Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Andy Barth. Rob McClendon will be here later in the show. Well, downtown Oklahoma City will be taken over this week by blue and gold corduroy as the 88th annual FFA State Convention gets underway. It's expected that around 10,000 FFA members and supporters will hit the Cox Convention Center as they prepare for motivational speakers, leadership workshops, and a showcase of FFA members' talents and skills. Yet before the convention comes to town, FFA members and advisors spend the year competing in contests, caring for animals, and learning more about the agricultural industry. FFA, formerly known as the Future Farmers of America, teaches students about the vast industry that feeds and clothes our planet. And while ag classes have their roots in small rural communities, Oklahoma metro areas are also teaching their students about the broad opportunities agriculture offers. The day is young in Amber, Oklahoma, a town so small they just have a flashing light. Last night was really good speech. And with school underway, Justin Reed's ag class has already started. A couple years. I want kids to really enjoy coming to my classroom. Reed is a student teacher this year at Amber Pocasset High School, and while he loves what he does, he wasn't always certain ag education was his calling. What? No. Growing up. I always had the dream of becoming a veterinarian. Hopefully, I can but get that a soon changed. Plant. We can talk about after I see how quickly I grew as a person. That's when the reality set in that I wanted to watch somebody else grow. So from the time I was a freshman, from about Christmas on, I quickly knew that I was going to become an ag ed teacher. Mm -hmm. And Reed says he has a strong role model to learn after. Billy Scott has been teaching at Amber Pocasset for 38 years and says teaching in a small town makes it easy for the community to support the program. You did do good. We're very fortunate to have a program that's recognized in the community and they, they like to see the success of our students and uh, not only in, in their school but also as they move forward in their careers. Plants have two, a little and one student headed for a successful career is sophomore Jana Bickerstaff. I wanted to go to uh, OSU. I want to get my mechanical engineer degree there. And it's just more to work in the ag business and work on stuff like that and building stuff and in that area of work. But for now, Bickerstaff is learning all things plants. There's two. It's like another class of them. Um, you know, doing what I love the most, your own things, or working with my hands and just learning more about the environment and what's going on. It does look good. And for teachers like Reed, it's exciting when students have fun in class. There's a smile that comes across the kid's face when they see a plant, when they see an animal, when you can talk to them about their previous knowledge. And so I really do like seeing the growth. I like seeing the smiles. I like seeing how kids interact and you know, it's a great place for kids to do something. We call it out of seat, out of place, where we get to go outside and do something rather than sit in the classroom and read the book the whole time. Does it require a second? Yes. Is it debatable? And no. Scott says ag education only grows in importance as fewer and fewer people are brought up on the farm. Uh, agriculture education, like I say, a lot of things say now they're like three generations removed uh, from the, the farm and so, it's just going to be so important as we try to talk about feeding a growing population, as we talk about trying to save natural resources, it's all going to come to these young people right here. The ones that are in agriculture education classes are going to be the ones that are probably solving those problems for the future. What about the complimentary one? And Bicker staff knows those problems are as simple as knowing where our food comes from. Less than 2% of the population feeds the population. That's a pretty small percentage and lots of people don't know where that stuff comes from. And so it's absolutely, I mean, I think it's, it's necessary in a child's life to know where things come from. Yet aside from knowing the origins of our food, FFA offers a large variety of career development. And for senior Mason Ware, his favorite event, livestock judging. I've been doing it ever since my freshman year, as soon as I got introduced to ag. Um, it's been a fun thing to do in high school, a fun activity, to, an easy way to get involved. Judging livestock involves looking at a group of animals and ranking them from best to worst, which is the easy part. I place the market hog. What comes after is explaining your placings to a judge. Heavier muscled individual. And for where, the skills he learned will go beyond the contest. 
is a bold rib, deep bodied individual. I think that the biggest thing that has helped me a lot in livestock judging would be the public speaking part of it. And it especially helped on memory. Uh, if I go into like a corporate job and have to give a presentation or even job interviews to get the job that I want to, it's gonna help a lot. In there. And when it comes to such career development events, Scott says students must learn to work independently. Goes to the commodity challenge. And they've got to work on their own a lot of times. Uh, uh, I sometimes reference it to like marathon runners. They're out there for a long period of time just working on their own. Yet, regardless of the hard work, Bickerstaff says FFA and ag education makes her and her classmates better people. I feel like it, um, it brings us more together as Younger, young adults, I guess you could say, um, shows us lots of leadership and uh, lots of teamwork involved there and organization. And just It teaches you more how to be pro more professional in the ag field. Well, FFA covers programs of all shapes and sizes, from the rural area we just visited to here, Edmond, Oklahoma, the outskirts of Oklahoma City, and where the ag barn is right in the middle of a suburban residential area. It's not a typical day here at the Edmund Ag Center, but according to teacher Mason Jones, atypical is normal. Every day is different, but we typically try and model our instruction, whether it's in the shop facility or in the greenhouse or in a typical classroom setting, to make everything that we do try and find a hands-on application to each lesson. Jones is one of three instructors in Edmund and says being in an urban area can present challenges to the program. A challenge that we are constantly facing is uh, maybe the misconception about our program and people that just are ignorant to some of the things that we do and trying to get our name spread to the community is always a challenge. We are more than just cows, sows and plows or your typical um, production agriculture conception that you have that we're not just a overall wearing pitchfork wielding farmer. In fact, they offer many different classes to help Great. students prepare for all sorts of careers. The agriculture power and technology class is a major part of what we do on a daily basis. Student, students that are learning how to um, work with metal, um, weld, cut, do everything uh, involved with that is a major part of what we do as well. And for students, Sage Holder, melting metal is there. fun. And this is my first year to weld, um, but I mean, I didn't know anything coming into it. I mean, I like it a lot. And for this city girl turned ag, welding could be in her future. I'm going to do this class next year, my junior year, and then my, also my senior year. And then, I mean, you never know, maybe a career out of it. A surprising new passion, all because of an ag class in the suburbs. I wouldn't even really know what welding was or what was or all the opportunities that I give you. So I think it's very good that Edmund has it. And welding is just one of many pieces in the agricultural puzzle. There's over 300 different careers in agriculture and we boast that often. And Jones believes his students can succeed in any of those careers. We have what we believe that some of the most talented students and uh, students that are just hardworking and excited about every single thing that you're teaching them. I've got a passion for my plants, and I ain't afraid to show it. I'm farming and I grow it. And one of those students is, is Edmund FFA's vice president, Kaylee Horn, who competed in a public speaking contest about agricultural advocacy. With the mission of empowering farmers and ranchers, I've been very busy in FFA, um, you know, going to camps, conferences, a lot of leadership events and then participating in public speaking and showing, I've definitely stayed really busy. So, you know, when I wear my official dress for official For Horn, day or FFA and agricultural event, education isn't about only about competing in speech contests not, and showing livestock. It's about educating the public about agriculture's key role in our society. In fact, college undergrads... Uh, I know for my speech I have to know that only 2% of Americans involved in agriculture. So it's important for people to kind of realize that this is a big deal and that farmers are the ones that are making their food, not Walmart. So it's really important to have something here in Edmond where we do have 200 members kind of showcasing what we do as agriculture and showcasing the future of agriculture. Telling them the difference between a cow and a bull is something that you wouldn't think that you'd ever have to tell someone from Oklahoma, whether they're rural or not. But that's something we talk about. 
It would be the And as far as Horn is concerned, FFA will take her farther than anywhere else. When the general a lot of kids are involved in sports and theater and all that, and that's great, don't get me wrong, but I think that this is something that's teaching us life skills. You know, people aren't going to be collegiate basketball players or baseball players. A lot of that's just going to end as soon as high school's over. But, you know, agriculture is our world's largest employer, and this is something that is enabling our youth to continue with what America's going to need. I mean, as long as people are eating, they're going to need agriculture. So it's something that's really needed in our society. Two separate programs, both with the same mission, to ensure the future of American agriculture. Angus to get a bald face. Well, no matter the size of the program, FFA and agricultural education go hand in hand. All programs work off of something they call the three circle model. Now, in order to have a successful program, teachers must combine classroom instruction, FFA, and a supervised agricultural experience, which is a student's project like raising animals or working for an ag-related company. Now, when we return, FFA members work to end hunger.